Good afternoon. My name is Steve Box. I'm the Vice President of Global Fishery Solutions with Rare. And I'm meant to be talking about an app called Our Fish, which is an app to collect up fisheries data and help manage small scale fisheries around the world. But I'm actually going to talk about something slightly different. I'm going to talk about an app as a tool, about how we can use it not only to collect data, but to connect people together to solve real global challenges that can help lift people out of poverty and really help sustain both people and nature. Especially in communities like this, where the idea that an app could be useful seems incredibly far-fetched. This is a small village in Myanmar. And this story starts with one man, and a man who inspired an idea to build an app that could lead to global change. Meet Noel. He's a 60-year-old fisherman. He lives to fish. He's been fishing since he was eight years old, and he lives off the coast of Honduras in this small community. This community, fishing isn't just a job. Fishing is the way of life. Everyone here fishes. Everyone here lives on and in and around the sea. Fish for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. This is fishing. And I used to spend time with Noel, sitting on his boat. I was studying fisheries in Honduras, and he would sit there and fish, and I would sit there and measure the fish, and I'd take samples of the fish. But while we were doing that, I was doing my science, and he was doing his job, we would talk, and he would tell me these stories, these stories of abundance, of incredible grouper spawning aggregations, of snapper migrations, just an incredible abundance of fish in these waters. And this was in stark contrast to what we were seeing. We were the sitting there pulling out small fish in low numbers, and there was this disconnect. And as I started working in other fishing communities around Honduras and eventually around the world, these same stories were being repeated. There was this central narrative that fish were no longer abundant, that fish were smaller, that people had to fish longer. And the people that were there on the water, in the water, under the water, had this narrative. And there were these echoes of Noel coming through over and over again. That abundance in the water, all of these fish, were fading. And with that, the rural economy, the way people were making money, was also under pressure. There was a real struggle here, not just because of livelihoods, but also for food security. And there was a real challenge. How do we solve this? So I set up data collection networks. I was a scientist. I was thinking, right, we can solve this. We can collect data that can really help solve this problem. And I did what a lot of people have done. I sat at docks. I measured fish. I put teams together, put them at different docks, and tried to really scale this up so that we could collect lots of data. And I realized I was on a fool's errand. I could never get enough information from all of these different locations and sustain that through time. And I went to national governments in the countries we were working and said, look, where's your data on small-scale fisheries? I know this is important. You must know it's important. And they were saying, well, we've tried. We don't think it's a priority. And the data we have collected, well, we don't really know what to do with it. So it's in the room over there. And they were like, but don't worry. It's not that important. These are small-scale fisheries. But small-scale fisheries employ 90% of all fishers and fish workers on the planet. So clearly it is important, but people hadn't been able to solve this problem. But I was spending time in these coastal communities, and I was seeing out of the corner of my eye that there was someone else writing things down. There's a guy, there's a data collector in the making in this photo. And he's sitting there, and he's writing stuff down in his books. And this is transaction information. When a fisher would come in to sell his fish or her fish, there's a transaction going on. And that gets written down. It gets recorded because they might have borrowed some money to be able to go out fishing. They might have bought some fuel that they'd pay with the fish when they come back in. And there was all of these records all around the world. Data is being collected in these small fishing communities. Here was scale. Here was an opportunity 
But how do we actually leverage that? How can we get that information out of those books? So we built an app. There's an app for everything these days. So the real challenge is how do we get that data from, from the guy on the left collecting it to the, the man on the right who's just tapping away and he's back to Facebook and WhatsApping. And, um, that was the challenge. Could we solve it? Could we build an app that would do that? And the answer is yes. That's the, the short part of this story. Yes, there's an app. It's called Our Fish. You can go to communities and see fish buyers using it. They register fishers. It's linked their transactional data to an individual fish data. It's wonderful. It's in Myanmar. It's in Belize. It's in Honduras. Story over, but not quite. What it's doing is it's starting to formalize their economy. It's starting to formalize what's going on. There are now records of that transaction. And that has huge power. And this is where the story, I believe, becomes really interesting. Yes, the app's exciting. It's digitally phenomenal. But the real power is two things. And you need two real enabling conditions to enable this to happen. The first is you can't just put an app in in isolation and expect everything to be solved. You can't expect that a piece of technology will solve this problem. You need the community around it. If we're actually going to solve small-scale fisheries problems, we need to empower, motivate, and excite communities that they have the solution in their hands. And that's the Fish Forever project at Rare. That's a global program to motivate and activate people. So being able to combine these two things together to give education and awareness to the communities at the same time as providing a tool <coughs> to collect up and use information has real power. It generates pride, it generates momentum to solve this global problem. And we empower people to make change. So that was one key part of this. It's not just the technology, it's having the community around that technology, such as citizen science in these cases, or to solve this fundamental global challenge. But there's another piece, and this is and a next step, this is how we take this tool combined with the local community empowerment and connect it up with something that's been going on in Kenya for 10 years now. This is M-Pesa. This is, Pesa means money in Swahili. This is a way of transferring money between people without needing a bank account. Really, really important in countries where bank networks are just in cities, they're not in rural communities. Very important where you previously had cash economies, you can now transfer money digitally or through cell phone networks. That's huge. That enables people to access formal credit. So imagine the power that Kenya has been having for 10 years, and a recent study came out in Science, using M-Pesa had lifted 200,000 households out of extreme poverty. And this is where we're now going with, with the app. Imagine a not too distant future where you have people using the app, using our fish to record their transaction data, surrounded by a community that is empowered and realized that they can solve their small scale fishing problems and linked to technology that already exists to formalize those financial transactions, to enable people to have access to savings, have access to insurance, have access to alternative credit so they're not just relying on payday lenders, cash lenders. They're no longer vulnerable. That builds financial resilience along with community empowerment. So we go back to Noel and his inspiration. He's, I still am in contact with him whenever I go back to Honduras. He's still there and he doesn't use a phone. And he's going, no, that's not for me to do. But I really love the power that you're giving to the next generation. I love that there could be a future. As we've talked about decline, you're seeing a shift as communities start to do this. And that's the power of this story. Not just the app itself, which you can look at videos, Google, Vimeo, Our Fish, and you can see them. The real power is what we can do with them. And that's the Fish Forever program and the power of Our Fish embedded in that. Thank you very much.